Hey there YouTube. Today I'm going to be installing an Eco Hitch by Torque Lift. Uh, it is a model number <laughs> this. And it's going on a 2017 Toyota Highlander non hybrid. It's not going to be so much a full tutorial, but just like tips and tricks on the installation of this. If you want the actual best, most up to date instructions on the installation of this hitch, um, go to the Eco Hitch website. I'm also going to be installing a Kurt uh, custom wiring connector. That's model number 56217. This was $33 on Amazon. And the hitch was $315 shipped without tax from uh, Torque Lift directly. This was actually back ordered on eTrailer, and when I ordered it, they said it would ship in a few days. But then a few days turned into a few weeks, and then a few weeks turned into the end of June. <laughs> so yeah, I got this right from the company, and they shipped it. I got it in two days from all the way across country. So. It's kind of nice, there's a string to hold up the, uh, the little door there. Something wrong with it? That was stuck. Alrighty. So now, can you see me? Mm hmm. Lift this up, put that through the hole, put this through the hole, and your tire is out of the way. Take note that some bolts are different than others. to get a straight shot on these bolts here that hold the uh, tow hook on plus when you torque these down you're gonna want a lot of room in here to get the torque wrench so I'll just take this off Looks like the exhaust is kind of holding its own weight there so there's a hanger right there so this is not that much weight so I don't need to get any support so don't really need to put the tire here <laughs> So long run on the outside, on the passenger side. Short pointy one on the inside, on the passenger side. I always make these look so easy in the videos.
the one that comes out of here is a metric screw. Machine screw. Okay, so one of the videos I saw, uh, if you take this thing out, they said that you could just push the hitch up here. And so like tuck this like that and then just shove the hitch up here and you could totally do that. Um, but when you do that, it kind of contorts the plastic a little bit. Um, and this plastic piece here is replaceable. If push came to shove. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this flappy doo off. Okay, so on this side of the car, there's a little plastic guard here. It's supposed to deflect the exhaust gases away from the car. You can kind of see it's directly above the tailpipe. So the instructions said to cut this. Um, I'm a little hesitant, to be honest. So I know from the first time I tried to install this that you can fit the hitch up in here and this will just put downward pressure on this. You can kind of contort the hitch in and not cut this. So if you're concerned at all about the exhaust gas thing, um, that's food for thought. After looking at this though and realizing that the exhaust gas is gonna be flowing out at a pretty good clip and it should clear the bumper easily, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this like the instructions say. Alright, so I was having a heck of a time trying to get these bolts in. Um, you'll notice that there's two bolts. Um, these are the metric ones that go into the bottom and the tops. And these are the standard ones, the SAE ones, that hold the bracket to the hitch body. So these go like in the bottom so outward sides, I guess. Anyway. So I'm trying to get these in there, and I'm like, okay, I'm putting way too much force on these. And as I was putting strain on the torque wrench, I was like, this is wrong. So uh, I decided to take the bolt that I was putting in and compare it against the one that was holding in the bracket for the tow hook. And sure enough, they sent me the wrong bolt. If I would have continued on my path of putting in this bolt instead of this thread of bolt it would have destroyed the bolt inside the frame the nut that's welded in there so good thing I stopped so when you get yours make sure that the bolts that hold the tow hook on match the threads that you got so just to hold those side by side you can see they are very different so now I get to put all this back together so that's what these are. These are 1.5. Here is the 1.25. No joy. Oh, like a glove. Look at that. So now, I guess this might be a good thing. I get to see how good the support for Torque Lift Central is. See right there? It's supposed to be 1.25. So they sent me the right bolts. bolt, right bolt. 
Alrighty, so time to continue. <clears throat> Okay, and for the two brackets, the bigger one, the one that's taller, as they say, goes on the passenger side, and this goes on the driver's side. Um, they only go on one way. This one won't fit on this side, and this one won't fit on the other side. And the plates only go one way too, so you can't, you can't screw it up. The holes will only align if you put these on right. Okay, so one thing the manual doesn't tell you is that the standard bolts that go in they go in from the outside of the vehicle the bolt goes in and the nut goes on the interior of the vehicle but because of that you can no longer torque these top bolts down once you have these bottom bolts loosely in because they block the head of this bolt so you can't get your torque socket on there so make sure you torque these down first and then do these. So myself, I always like to leave everything loose so I can kind of like adjust as I'm putting stuff together, but you don't really have that option here. Just push the hitch as forward as you can and crank those suckers down to, in my manual, it says 65 foot pounds. So when you're done, double check they're all torqued to 65 foot-pounds, which is probably the hardest part of this job without jacking the vehicle up, that is. I did not use jack stands at all. Um, just kind of tight in here. Totally doable though, without jack stands and a jack, much safer not jacking it up. Right here, I hope it's light enough you, that you can see the plastic hits and there's no getting around trimming this on the driver's side. For the instructions, I am going to zing that little bit off. Looks like it goes from the left side of this hole up here, then all the way over here. I do wonder if I could just take this ear off, so I'm going to do this first. Alrighty, I think I got a way of just trimming that. All my holes are lining up. So let's put this back together. All right, so I was able to get the passenger side up without any cutting at all. And just kind of finessed it in there. 
all the hardware is in and it's here. Okay, tight. So I got the tire up. So you'll see that it actually clears the hole for the receiver. So if you have anything that protrudes in, it should be fine. All right, now we gotta get to the gooey insides here. Wow, I didn't even know there was a cubby over here. <laughs> oh, put this in. All right, and here's the magic goodness of the inside. And here's the two connectors we're gonna connect to. Getting dark, so I'm gonna hurry up and do this. Four pin thingy goes into the four pin thingy. Pretty straightforward. Crap ton of pin thingy goes into the Crap ton of pin thingy. Look at that, couldn't get simpler than that. Alright, I got us some light in here. I hope you can see everything. There is a bolt right here on the driver's side. 12 millimeter. That looks good. It's literally the only bolt I see other than the same bolt on the other side. So save yourself the hassle and <laughs> use the self-tapper screw that's included in the bag. There we go. And under the vehicle, the wire, if you use the grommet on the driver's side, is going to pop out up here. So it's going to pop out up there and you have to kind of dig your arm in there and reach towards the uh, driver's side. I was able to leave the plastics on since it comes out on this side. So as for the wire, I just zip tied it to this old mounting location here for the plastics. Then I just zip tied it to the chain thing and it kind of just hangs down there by the wires. It's not the best design, but I'm not going to pay 30 bucks for a magnetic thing. So, <laughs> all right, time to put it back together. Make sure you didn't leave anything. Okay, so the kit comes with a 10 amp fuse. The towing circuit on here is a 30 amp fuse according to this, but that's okay. You can use a smaller fuse um, in place of a larger fuse. Alrighty, so I don't have the right lens for this, but you're gonna take the 10 amp fuse and put it in the slot between the two seven and a half fuses on a 2017 anyway. And so no project should be completed in the daytime. Um, there's what it looks like. And I will go 
get some measurements.